All right, this is try number two for this video. At least we have some audio, hopefully. Uh, we are gonna do the spinning sign. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you how to do that in Robot C. Uh, it's real simple. First of all, we need to uh, get into the right application. So make sure you click on the Robot C for VEX Robotics 4.X. And once that loads, uh, first thing we're gonna do is define uh, our motors and sensors. And we're just going to have one motor and one sensor. Uh, this is going to be a very, very simple program. I'm going to try and keep this video short. Okay, So uh, click New File in the upper left. <clears throat> and you should have a screen like this. Now, uh, make sure you always check if you have any kind of issues. Make sure you check under Robot and then under Platform Type. And this should be uh, VEX 2.0 Cortex. Yeah, VEX 2.0 Cortex. Okay, and then under same place, you should have natural language PLTW. If you see the check mark, don't click it again. Uh, that'll unselect it. So it's, it's already selected here. Okay, all right. I'm going to click motor and sensor setup up here. And then I'm going to go to motors. I have more menu options. Uh, you might have less. Uh, that's because I have. Uh, the menu level set to super user. Let me change it back to basic. Here we go. Okay, so you should have standard models, motors, analog sensors, and digital sensors. Okay, digital sensors are just on or off, like a light switch, like a normal light switch, just on or off. Uh, a an analog sensor is something between on and off, uh, like a potentiometer or those little knobs you turn, uh, like a dimmer switch. The little knobs you turn. Uh, to uh, dim the light down to halfway, okay? Um, those are analog sensors, but digital sensors are just either on or off. So in digital port one, in digital one, I'm gonna have a touch sensor, which is just a button, okay? And then I'm gonna call it the start button, okay, start button. And then uh, you can click apply if you want, and you'll notice it automatically generates the code up there for you. Um, then I'll go to motors. I'm going to put my motor on port one. We'll just call it the spin motor. And I'm using camel case. Remember, that's all lowercase except for if you're doing multiple words, you do a capital letter uh, with no spaces. You can't have spaces in any of this, okay? And that's a 393 motor. I'll click OK. And there we go. Now remember, you see these uh, start button spin motors, they're, they're blue. Uh, and they're blue because they haven't been compiled yet. So uh, if I want them to show up in the autocomplete, in other words, like down here, if I say uh, until bump, and then I'm looking for start button, right? In my autocomplete, start button isn't there. Why isn't it there? Well, because the program doesn't know that that's an option yet. So you need to click compile program. Compile program, and then those should change color and the first time you compile it, it should ask you uh, to save the program. Um, make sure you save it under OneDrive. Uh, and you're going to see something very different, but you're going to save it under OneDrive. Uh, go to your, uh, go to the students folder. Uh, create yourself a folder in there, okay? Uh, and then name the file uh, your, your name, okay? And then it should compile. Down below, if you see it in red, it says the file compiled. If, it's, if you get any errors there, well, you'll need to resolve those errors, okay? But uh, my uh, program so far has compiled, right? Okay. It's always good to have pseudocode, and those are, I'm going to say, multi-line comment. Uh, and the way you do that is just with these little uh, slash asterisks and then asterisk slash. All right, the forward slash is down on the bottom of the keyboard where the question mark is. All right, and the asterisk is on the number eight key, so you have to push shift and then eight. All right, now uh, PSUDO, PSUDO, CODE, there we go, pseudo code. All right, so uh, let's say wait until a button is pressed. All right, and then I'm gonna do like the semicolons because that's how like our lines of codes are end are ended. Okay, and then I'm gonna say uh, start motor uh, 
start the, let's say, spin motor. I'll do that. Uh, and run forever. How about that? Okay. All right. So that's a real simple program. Let's go down here and start actually programming it. Um, so the wait until button is pressed, that command is fairly easy. Uh, let me expand this for you. The wait until button pressed is fairly easy. Uh, it's just until bump. Remember that's a, okay, so it's a, like a bumper switch. Until bump. All right. And then what we what did we call it? Let's look back up. Start button. There it is. Start button. And then semicolon. So the program will not do anything at all until that button is pressed. So it'll be stuck on on this line right here. It'll be stuck there until that button is pressed. Okay. So we'll call that. We'll do some single line comments over here. Uh, forward slash forward slash and I will say nothing happens until the button is pressed. Okay. Next line. Let's say start motor. And the motor we're going to start, we called it spin motor. And let's run it at, uh, say, 50. 127 would be super fast. If you have it like at a direct connector, then uh, 50 is going to be plenty. If you have it set to uh, like on a gearing ratio, then you might want to make it faster. Uh, it really just depends upon your setup. So you'll just use the speed that you need. Uh, remember, you can try it and always change it. Okay, so this will start the motor. Okay, that's that's really going to be it, right? Now we just need to say how long we want to run that motor for. And remember, we could just say, you know, we could say wait 10 seconds, and then you'll push the button. Uh, the sign will spin for 10 seconds, and then that's it. The motor will be done. If you wanted it to do anything else you would need to um, turn off the Cortex, turn it back on, and get it running again, okay? So we don't really want that, right? We want the uh, program to, to have the motor start and then run continuously forever. So that means we need this guy, and uh, we don't really need the weight, but we need those two things right here to be in a loop. Okay, and we do we do a loop with the statement called while. So we're going to say while you are while this condition is met, and that's the condition, right? And then you put these little these guys right here to say that's where it's contained. Okay, and I'm just doing some tabs here just to to show it, make it easy. Okay, so this guy right here, this little closing bracket, meets that one. So all this stuff inside of those brackets, and then this bracket, all this stuff inside of that bracket. So right now we have to say while wow, something, while wow, something is true, right? Uh, it's going to look for uh, the condition. So we say while, and then what? All right? If your parents say uh, while blank be good, uh, or while while at your, your grandma's house, don't you know pick your nose. Okay, so the, the while statement, and then there's a condition. So the while uh, you're at your grandma's house, that's the condition. So if you're not at your grandma's house, you, you can pick your nose. Okay, so while we're going to say one is equal to one. I have two equal signs there because it's uh, called a comparator. You're comparing one to one. Is one equal to one? Always, right? Uh, and so you're just a, it's a way of telling the computer, telling your robot, while always okay so while always that's a weird way of saying it if english we'd say always or we could say you know always keep your finger out of your nose okay so while one is equal to one which is always okay we're going to start the motor and so if we're always starting the motor that'll work fine it'll be okay and then the weight we don't have to have a weight but 
we'll just say do like a one second wait. And just that way our program uh, will start the motor, wait a second, start the motor, wait a second, start the motor, wait a second, and that's it. Okay, guys. Uh, don't forget to compile. And if it compiles uh, successfully, you just upload it. And that's all there is to it. That's it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a quick bonus here uh, called uh, a way we can use uh, variables. Okay. So a way we can use variables, let me make some space here. Okay. All these spaces don't matter. They're just for us to make it so that our program is easier to read and understand. Okay. I'm going to set a variable. I'm going to do it right here. Uh, and there's different kinds of variables. There's integers, which are just whole numbers. Um, there's floating decimal point. There's characters. And then there's string and, um, variables. And there, there might be more, but uh, we're just going to stick with the integer, okay? I-N-T, because we're just going to use a whole number. And we'll call it speed, okay? And we're going to say speed is equal to 50. All right, and now I'm on a compile program. Now, you see the gray X there is just saying, hey, you have a, you have a variable that you're not using. Uh, it's just saying, hey, you, you don't need that, uh, but we're going to use it here in just a second. So down here where it says motor spin or spin motor, and we have the speed of it as 50, now we could just say speed. And I'm not sure. Let's see here. Yeah, that should work. Let's see file program. There you go. Okay, now the, the way that using this is you can set up the variable and so you can set the variable to equal 50 and then you down here you use it as where you needed 50. Now the, the nice thing about that is if you have a really really long program and you have a lot of uh, places where you've specified the speed of motors uh, you can now use that variable that just says speed. And then if you need to go back to your program later and change the speed, rather than going every line and finding all the places you started a motor and changing the speed, all you'd have to do is at the very top of the program, just change that value. If we wanted it full speed, you just do that. And everywhere that speed was referenced, it would change it to 127. Okay, so let's leave it at 50. There we go. All right. Make sure you compile your program, upload it to your robot, and give it a try. Uh, you can try it with the motors at your station um, while your mechanical engineer and your electric electrical engineer are still working on getting the uh, physical uh, sign uh, ready for you. Okay. Uh, good luck. Hope it works for you. And I'll be here to help.